Welcome back everyone. My name is Joe and over the last year I've documented my journey of writing a first novel. In fact, a trilogy of novels called Rivendoa. I live with my husband Richard and our granddaughter Hannah on six acres of land nestled in the wilds of Virginia. Every Monday I post a video sharing the joys and challenges of writing a first novel. In this week's video, I'm cooking up a hot breakfast over an open flame out here at the clearing, as well as discussing my latest challenges in writing my novel. So come along and join me in my adventures in living as a writer and an artist. Hey everyone, we've got a uh, nice and sunny uh, day out here today. Um, though the temperatures are very low, probably in the 20s right now. Um, we got a snowstorm on uh, Monday and then we got another snowstorm on Thursday. Uh, neither of them were as big as that first snowstorm that we got and we did not lose power, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but uh, it is still very cold out here. The the I, the uh, snow kind of went icy and melted and refroze, and it's been very slow to thaw. So it's very cold out here. So my uh, first priority today is to get a fire going, uh, chop some wood up, uh, clear out the uh, fire pit of snow and ice, which you can see is right in the pit right now, and. Uh, uh, get a good uh, hot roaring fire going so that I can uh, put on my breakfast of uh, eggs and ham today, ham and eggs. Uh, and then I have a special surprise, which I'm going to share with you guys. Um, and then I'll be talking, and sort of as an, in the process of doing all that, as usual, I'll be talking about my novel, uh, Rivendoa, uh, and the things that I want to try and accomplish to get that moving forward. Kind of give you a state of where I am and uh, what I have to do to finish it. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to try and make that a uh, part of my weekly videos so it kind of give you an update as to where I am. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, why don't you come along with me?
I'm gonna go ahead and chop up a little bit more here. So I'll have some extra when this burns down. couple of larger pieces I think will do. And then this good dry wood I'm gonna put on and then take some of the um, wood that's a little bit water soaked that's been sitting out here and lay it around the sides and then drop it in once that fire gets good and hot and it gets warmed up. Got a nice uh, fire going here. That is cooking up good. That's gonna make some great coals. Once that burns down a little bit, I'm going to take some of this wood that I'm drying out here on the side, throw that in, and that will keep that fire going. Looking nice. Well, uh, the uh, fire is going. It's feeling good and warm. And luckily, the uh, wind is not as changing as much as it was uh, last week. I kept, no matter where I sat, it seemed to me I was getting uh, smoke in my face. But... Um, got that thing going it's looking pretty good i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that because that wood is burning fast that dry wood so i'm gonna get that uh, wet wood in there as soon as possible but before i started it and before i start really my breakfast out here and my get my coffee going i wanted to just share with you uh, some of the challenges i've been facing writing the middle part of the story um, i have chosen to write my first novel uh, wings of shadow which is part of my Rivendoa trilogy in the traditional uh, three act structure. Uh, the first act is nearly complete and the second and third acts uh, have been fully outlined. Uh, they're probably gonna change uh, some once I get into the meat of some of the writing of that, but uh, I mean, I've filled out some of the uh, story pieces and set pieces in the first and uh, in the second and third act but uh, it's gonna probably change as I, you know, work at it from a linear point of view. I tend to work from beginning to end, I think works best for me. The uh, third act or third section of the novel has been fleshed out in my mind. Uh, and some sections of it have been written, uh, but I don't wanna write the finale until I have completely uh, written the second or middle part uh, of the story and then get to the third act. Uh, that's a challenge because I think sometimes the middle part can be the most difficult in a three act structure. Uh, uh, it, a lot of things have to happen in there that prepare uh, the reader uh, for the finale that comes uh, to give it the most impact. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So I guess what I'm saying is I, I really wanna make that middle count and to have value to to the reader uh to so you get that payoff at the end um boy that fire is already burning down so i'm going to uh put some some more of this wood on here i don't want it to smoke me out like it did uh last time uh, that i was out here uh so um i'm going to go ahead and get started on that and then we'll uh, talk some more about the uh the challenges of the middle section in a in a three-act uh story So I want to continue with the challenges uh, I've been facing in dealing with the middle section of my uh, three act story, which is of course only the first act of a trilogy. The, you know, I, I recently um, saw, watched a video on YouTube of an interview with Professor Tolkien that took place back in 1964. Uh, he was, he was uh, the uh, interviewer was asking him questions about uh, the Lord of the Rings, which had, you know, I think came out in full by 1954. So by 1964, he'd been out for about 10 years and was, of course, it was the popularity of it was building. But anyway, in this interview, uh, he asked uh, Professor Tolkien, uh, 
if he was aware that the ring would have to be destroyed by Frodo when he wrote, uh, when he when he was in the beginning stages of the story, because he uh, Tolkien talked about in a, in previous parts of the interview, uh, which you can uh, look at here if you want to, you can see that interview. Um, in the in the beginning, uh, in uh, the questions, the the few questions before that had dealt with uh, was, uh, you know, how how he writes, and uh, you know, Tolkien said that he was a very linear writing. He sort of started it and didn't really know what was going to happen until he got to the end. He, it's a, he writes in a very linear manner, manner, discovering it along the way, sort of a pantser, as we call it, which is sort of how I write also. Uh, so I could really relate to that. But uh, the, the point that I was making was that um, he tried to, you know, he was asked, uh, do you think the, uh, did you know that the ring was going to be destroyed on Mount Doom uh, in the early stages of the writing? And he said, well, you know, I had to discover it. But he said, you know, that was the, the fact that the ring was going to be destroyed uh, was said by <clears throat> Gandalf very early on. So, yes, he said, I knew it. And he said, uh, in fact, I tried to write that scene multiple times. Uh and was not able to, you know, actually, but by the time I got to that point, after having written the first two novels, or the really the first two parts of the story, it's really one one novel in his mind, though it was released in three parts as a trilogy. Um, he said he had to scrap what he had done. And I'd like to read this uh, quote here uh, directly from him. This sort of says how he explained how how that uh, felt to him. He said, several times, and this is a quote, several times I tried to write the last scene ahead of time. Uh, it never, it didn't come out. It never worked. I had to wait for it to come through, which uh, just the way he explains that, you know, I sort of feel the same way. I, in my mind, I know what the finale is of the first book, Wings of Shadow, but I can't really write it. I sort of tried to a little bit, but I have a feeling that by the time I have written the middle section and the, uh, and the leading up elements of the final act, by the time I get to the finale, it's going to be written differently, simply because I fleshed those ideas out a little bit more. And he also wrote, and this also is a quote, and he says later in the interview, anyway, there is no good trying to anticipate because all these things I tried to write ahead of time just to direct myself all proved all proved to be no good when I got there. So, you know, I have to just sort of relax and let myself move through this story at the pace that it's going to come. And I can't get, you know, even though I may know, I have ideas about what the finale is going to look like, I really have to let that come at the appropriate time. So... That is some of the frustration of the middle is, you know, doing whatever I have to do to get to that point so that I can really understand what it is I'm trying to say and write and let the scene build based on all the things that have come up to it up to that point. So anyway, I'm sort of rambling on here uh, about writing the middle. And I don't know, maybe if you you're in the process of trying to write something that's sort of in, in that three act structure uh, whether it's a short story or a novel, uh, you may be sort of uh, tackling the same ideas or same issues that I'm running into. And if you want to share anything about that in the uh, comment section below, I'll respond to any any comments that I get about uh, the writing uh, process or if you just have questions about me. Um, and maybe this is a good point in time to, to, to remind everybody that it's going to be very helpful to me and to this channel and to the promotion of my book uh, and f to help me find like-minded people just like you who are watching this now to, uh, if you subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up, you know, if you like the content so far in this video uh, and, uh, you know, always clang that little bell uh, to make sure you uh, get the next, uh, you know, notif notify, get notified of the next video coming. So anyway, my fire is looking really good right now. I'm going to get some good coals. I'm going to go ahead and get my coffee on, 
get my uh, kettle, which I uh, introduced in the last video, which you can see up here. And uh, you can uh, uh, see how, how that worked out. It worked actually very well. So I'm gonna use it again today. Uh, so I'm gonna tamp the, the flames down a little bit and uh, get it ready to put the cook pot on, the, the kettle. So anyway, uh, why don't you hang in there and I'll uh, get that going. Well, it looks like I've misplaced my gloves, so I'm going to just do this without the gloves. I'm not sure um, what I did with them, but uh, I need to get this thing going, so it's not going to look anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I kind of like to have my gloves when I'm working in the fire, but um, let's see if I can get some more dry wood on here. Found them. Anyway, let me uh, go ahead and get a little bit more dry tinder on the wood and uh, then I'm going to get that cook pot on there and get some uh, coffee brewing. Uh, then I'll start my eggs. I also want to show you what I brought today to cook on the grill. Go ahead and open up things here. I've got my kooksa, got my grill. I have my cast iron grill. And of course I have my knife in here. When I was cutting the wood, I cut this piece here to use kind of as my plate. So I'm gonna lay out the things here that, oops, that I have brought today. I have got uh, some beautiful pieces of ham here that I'm gonna be using. Uh, and in here, I have my uh, eggs that I brought. And I'll go ahead and get those out. Got two nice brown eggs. Let me uh, go ahead and put them here so they don't roll off. And then in addition, the surprise that I had, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out now. Oops, don't wanna lose those eggs, is I have some raisin uh, cinnamon toast already got my butter on the toast, uh, which I'll split apart when I'm ready to put it on the grill. Uh, so this is what I've got today. And uh, the uh, water is going and I've got uh, this beautiful meal to cook. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, uh, tamp down the fire a little bit and I'll get my grill on so that I can start this and put it uh, right here in my pan. I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, coffee on. Let's see. All right. Got my uh, coffee. Make that nice and strong. Got here my oil and some salt and pepper. Let's get that coffee going. I think it's uh, ready. So I'm going to get it off and get it going. Ooh, hot. Ooh. Man.
Now I'm just going to put this on. Let that sit a minute and brew. And I'm going to get my eggs and ham going. I'm going to take it off just a little bit. Taste on. The last time I cooked bread. I think I made some bagels out here and they got really burnt. So I am going to try and keep an eye on these. I do not want these to get burnt. Ooh, already they're getting toasty. Ooh, there we go. Looking good. Ooh, yeah, nice and toasty. I'm not just, I'm not going to try and turn these eggs because they will break if I do. Coming along nicely. Let's see how these are doing. Don't want to overdo it. I think that's done. I'm gonna pull everything off. I lost uh, one of my pieces of toast, but this one's looking very, very good. And I did go ahead and turn the eggs, and now I'm gonna give them one last little toasting over here on the flame. And I think I'll be ready to eat. All right, I got them all laid out there. The, uh, like I said, I lost one of the pieces of toast, but uh, this is looking very tasty. And one of the nice things is when I'm ready to, when I finished eating, uh, I can just throw my dishes right in the fire. I think we are ready. So I'm gonna push this down. I think I have done my brewing. Let that sit just a minute. And bring my breakfast over here. Look at that. Tell me that doesn't look delicious. And then got a little bit of salt and pepper in here, which I'm gonna sprinkle on there. 
Now, I think I am ready for my coffee, and then I am going to dig in. All right, so let's see how this coffee came out. It should be nice and dark. Oop, I'm spilling it everywhere. Yep, it looks pretty good. And put this to the side. And let's eat. Okay, everyone. Let's see how we're doing here. We'll start out with a uh, taste of hot coffee. Strong. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Like that. Now, for the uh, piece de resistance, we have this. Look at that. Beautiful eggs, beautiful ham, and some raisin uh, cinnamon toast. It just looks like a smorgasbord, doesn't it? Look at that. <laughs> All right, well, let me get my fork out and we'll get started. I did bring a fork out here today, so... Um, you know, I probably should have uh, chosen a bagel. It's kind of what I wanted to have out here to pile all this up on. But I tell you what I'm going to do. Is I'm just going to take some of this ham right here. Stick it on that egg. Mmm. Oh, that is good. You know... Some of the little ends here might be burnt, but I tell you, when it's cooked over an open fire, hmm, so good. Look at that. That is cooked to perfection. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I hope you don't mind me eating. In fact, if you were here, if you were sitting here with me, I would let you have as much of this as you wanted. Maybe, uh, maybe a time will come. You'll be sitting out here with me and we can uh, partake of this together, wherever you are out there. If not, maybe you can cook a little something of your own and we can eat it out, eat it out here together. Mm. Mm. I lost a piece of ham. Oh, it's got some stuff on it, but I think the uh, five second rule works. <laughs> I doubt if there's anything out here that'll kill me. No. Oh, so good. Now, I sort of kind of crunched this thing up. Can you see that? Raisins and um, I'm going to have it here with my coffee. Mmm. Deliciously sweet. Mmm. This is that Pepperidge Farm bread. I just absolutely love it. You know, the combination of <clears throat> raisins and cinnamon and uh, uh, coffee and bread, can't go wrong. Mm. Cheers, very tasty. Mm. That is so good. Wish you could be here to taste it with me. Now, let me go ahead and take one more bite out of my egg and ham. Right here. Made a little uh, ham sandwich of egg and ham. Mmm. Mmm-hmm.
you know, I had to really work on that fire to get it going today. And I tell you, it was worth it for this. This is so good. Hmm. Mm. So good. Mm. You know, I hear there are videos out there now that, you know, I just heard the, the term yesterday, and of course it went right out of my mind, but um, where people eat and people watch them eat. I think it started in Korea seems to be a global phenomenon on TikTok and YouTube and other videos, but it uh, sounds kind of strange to me, but, you know, I, I do, you know, I do like sharing this food that I cook here. And maybe by watching, you can see, you know, how tasty it is for me. Um, and uh, looks like it's uh, made me the, uh, today's, uh, member of the um, Clean Plate Club. And if your parents ever said that to you and you cleared your plate, well, I am now a member of the club and it's time to do the dishes. Well, <laughs> I finally, uh, uh, kind of getting back to working to what I'm doing with the, uh, <clears throat> with my novel, <clears throat> I have finally created a structured outline for the first, second, and third act. So every, uh, scene is sort of covered in terms of having a title. Some of them aren't filled out. Some of them have copy in it or text that I've, uh, or writing that I've done on them. Others are nothing just more than a title at this, at this stage, especially in the third act where probably the least of it has been fleshed out. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I have done is create a story structure built on symmetry. Now I know this is kind of odd. I, I don't know if other writers do this, but for me, it was the only way that made sense to me. Um, there are three acts, six chapters uh, in each act, and in each uh, chapter there are nine scenes. And that is throughout the entire entirety of the novel. Um, and you know, some people may think that's odd, um, uh, and I'm sure there are critics who would say that you know doing it that way forces you to um uh fill in uh to to make to make the number rather than letting the story uh dictate <clears throat> how many chapters and scenes there are but for me you know being a pantser and uh you know letting the story unfold a as i write it uh, without, you know, uh, creating an outline or structure in the beginning and then filling in the story, which is not my style. Uh, I sort of had to wait until I was at least a third, almost a uh, half done before I, I was ready to, to build my outline. But um, some critics may say that that's not the right way to approach it, but it's the way I needed to approach it because I feel like uh, being a pantser, uh, someone who uh, lets the story unfold as you write, I felt like uh, I needed that structure. Um, and it also just, uh, you know, as a visual artist, uh, which is kind of where I come from, you know, uh, symmetry just has always been important to me in design. And th that doesn't mean when I say symmetry uh, that, you know, when you create a visual image that it's a mirror image. You know, but what it is, is uh, the elements are balanced, left to right, top to bottom, uh, side to side. 
um, corner to corner. Uh, if it's in a circular design, uh, it, it can be all the way around, but there has to be a sense of symmetry uh, to it in order for it to make sense to me. Other artists, other writers are gonna see it completely differently, uh, but this is, what, this is what works for me. And I just wanted to share that with you. And uh, uh, I guess any way you approach writing a novel, it's gonna have its challenges. And for me, it's figuring out how to uh, get the story to work within that structure. Uh, but it seems to be working in the development of a story in three acts. You have the setup, the confrontation, and the finale. And that's a, that's a very basic way of looking at it. But the, uh, for me, when I was writing the, uh, the setup, the, the structure developed itself. The outline sort of developed itself. And I ended up with that structure of having, uh, you know, uh, six chapters, uh, nine scenes per chapter just worked. And so I felt like I really wanted to carry that through the rest of the novel. And it seemed to help me uh, build the story in a way that was cohesive. Now, of course, some of the, uh, you know, some of the, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to look into the camera, I'm not out here anywhere. But um, uh, in terms of this, of that structure, it, it, it was uh, some of the uh, scenes uh, the nine scenes in each chapter, you know, some of them are, are a paragraph. A couple even might be one or two lines. Some of them are multiple pages, uh, uh, maybe tens of pages. But um, depending on how important that scene is and how long it takes to that's for that scene to unfold. Um, but it just it seemed to work for me and I feel comfortable with it doing it this way. Um, when I get to the end, of course, I'll... Uh, you know, maybe have a breakdown of, of looking at the whole arc of my writing this novel uh, and a critique and uh, see if it really worked for me. Uh, you know, at this stage, it's what is working, and so I'm going to stick with it. Um, and and, it, and it hopefully it's going to help me focus on getting that middle section done so that uh, I can then move on to the uh, the final section, the resolution, the, con the final... Uh, a confrontation that occurs uh, between the characters, the good and the evil characters, and uh, but still leave it on a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end of the first novel so that you'll be anticipating, uh, you know, what's going to happen in the next novel uh, in, in part two. So anyway, uh, I think I'll go ahead and wrap it up for today. I kind of talked, rambled on as much as I can think of things that I wanted to say today. Uh, again, if you have any thoughts and you uh, want to ask me any questions, feel free to, to hit me up in the comment section below and I will answer any question that's, that's, that's posed. Um, one of the things I am considering doing uh, in the future is maybe a, you know, I probably have to get more than uh, 20 odd subscribers. Maybe when I get up to a thousand, hopefully will will happen at some point. I want to try and do a live a broadcast, you know, I'm sure I'm saying that the wrong way, but a, a live YouTube, uh, and, and sort of see how that goes so that you can ask me questions and, uh, you know, I can get some direct, direct feedback and you can get some direct feedback from me, uh, versus having to do that through comment section. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Um, I'm going to finish my coffee here and I'm going to hang around for a while and, uh, let the, uh, fire, um, burn down and uh, I think I want to get it down to coals today. Um, one of the things I would like to do is I'm going to look online for something that I can place over the fire. So if I do get snow or rain, it doesn't make it so wet because it really did, I did have had trouble getting the fire started today without it smoking. It got really smoky there at one point and you know, it's unfortunately this, instead of going straight up, it was going that way into the neighbor's uh, area over there. So don't like that, but Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, finish off my coffee. Uh, it's still warm and sit out here and enjoy this uh, beautiful uh, sunny uh, afternoon uh, because once that sun goes down, it's going to get cold. So uh, I'm going to sit out here and enjoy it for a while and warm up to the fire and I will uh, see you guys in the next video. Uh, well, oh, one thing I did want to say. Uh, 
uh, my next video is going to be sort of a book review. Uh, not specifically a review of the book, but how the book affected me. And I want to kind of start a series of those uh, in my videos where I uh, pick out a book that has had a you know profound effect on me as a as a just a person and a writer and um, uh, kind of share that with you and uh, the first one's kind of a fun one because it might be something you would not be expecting but anyway I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll see you guys then